In the most remote areas of the world, something massive is silently stalking its victims and swallowing them whole. They cut it open, and sure enough, they found the little girl in the stomach of the snake. History supports the existence of snakes larger than anyone imagined. A 30-foot python probably has the ability to open its mouth in two to three feet wide. This would lead you to believe that, yes, it could swallow an adult human being. Now, using the latest technology, science explores the wilderness. Oh, wow, there's a big guy right here, right ahead of us, right there. And uncovers evidence much closer to home. Hold on, there's one. An expedition searches for proof and uncovers some surprises. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. This is the Republic of Venezuela. The rugged grasslands here teem with monkeys, giant anteaters, and the world's largest rodents called capybaras. Lurking beneath the surface of these rivers are ferocious predators like crocodiles and piranhas. But the people here say something even bigger and more deadly is out there. Legendary, monster-sized anacondas. And they are becoming its prey. He's saying that they were 40 to 50 meters long. He had my whole hand in his mouth. The snake pulled me down to the ground, so I was just trying to get my hand back. The girl was lost. No one could find her. The snake had already swallowed her. Anacondas are some of nature's most vicious predators, equipped with razor-sharp teeth and powerful muscles to crush their prey. The teeth of the anaconda are like needles that curve backwards. If you try to pull out, they go in even further, deeper. And then it throws a couple loops and starts squeezing incredibly powerfully. The prey is trying to get its breath, and with every breath, those coils just tighten up even more until cardiac arrest. Here you can see an anaconda making a meal of a capybara. The snake squeezes the animal, then swallows it whole. Eyewitness reports from around the world describe monster snakes reaching nearly 150 feet, or half a football field in length. These giants could be anacondas or pythons, two of the largest snake species in the world. Unlike other snake species, which kill their prey with poisonous venom, pythons and anacondas are constrictors, snakes that squeeze their prey to death. Pythons are native to Asia and Africa, anacondas to South America. No one has ever produced hard evidence of a python or anaconda longer than 30 feet. Monster Quest is sending biologist Jesus Rivas deep into Venezuela to hunt for just such a giant, an anaconda bigger than any found before. He's flown from Caracas, the Venezuelan capital, to the town of Barinas. From here, it's a three-hour drive into the Llanos. Los Llanos, in Spanish, means plains. It is a 200,000 square mile swath of wild savanna. The largest anaconda I found was about 17, 18 feet long. However, there have been a couple of stories people have told me that refer to a very large snake, probably much larger than anyone that I have caught. And I had no reason to disbelieve this story. The first stop on Rivas's expedition is here, the tiny town of Montecal. It's the final outpost before leaving civilization behind. He's looking for clues from the locals about what they've seen. And he's led to this man. He just told me a story, actually quite a remarkable, something that happened to his cousin 35 years ago. The man claims that his 13-year-old cousin had gone down to the local river alone. An anaconda approached. In the water, the snake was all but invisible. Without warning, it attacked. The anaconda wrapped its massive coils around the girl. 
there was no chance of escape. The snake squeezed the girl to death, then proceeded to swallow her whole. They found her, they killed it, they cut it open, and sure enough, they found the little girl uh, in the stomach of the snake. That was the largest snake I had ever seen. It was at least 45 feet long. 45 feet is a giant snake, and it's just what Rivas is looking for. From this town, it's an hour's drive to this remote ranch called El Sidra. This will be Rivas's base of operations. Because anacondas can thrive on both land and in water, Rivas has a plan to search both for the elusive giant snake. He's pioneered a low-tech but daring technique to search for these predators. Feeling for them with his bare feet. He'll also be armed with motion-triggered cameras and the latest military-grade sonar to help him peer into deeper waters. Existing evidence of giant snakes is sparse. One of the earliest and most famous accounts comes from British explorer Percy Fawcett, who in 1907 says he encountered a 62-foot anaconda in Brazil. Later expeditions came back with fantastic stories of killer snakes. But more recently, this series of photographs surfaced on the internet. They appear to show a man swallowed whole by a giant python. But are these photos hoaxes or real evidence of giant man-eating snakes? Experts will analyze this evidence. If you look at the ribs, they are facing towards the back and that would be consistent with the snake swallowing towards the tail. The pythons in these photos are native to Asia and Africa. But there could be thousands of them right here in the United States, specifically in the Everglades of South Florida. This will be the site of another Monster Quest expedition. With more than one and a half million acres of wilderness, this is a perfect hiding place for giant snakes, as seen in these shocking pictures taken in 2005. You can see a 13-foot Burmese python split almost in two after swallowing an alligator whole. On the upper right is the snake's head. On the left, its tail. The alligator's tail protrudes from the snake's ruptured belly. To look at an animal, for instance, like a python feeding on an alligator that it would not find in its normal habitat, shows that the animal would adapt to what's available to it. A snake's digestive systems are incredible. They can digest almost anything. And evidence suggests that these eating machines are on the move. This is also a Burmese python, and it's invaded this man's suburban Miami backyard. His struggle with it was captured by a local news crew. Fearing for his exotic fish, the owner and a friend jumping into action, trying to pounce on the python, but charming this snake didn't go so well. It was no isolated incident. Just a few days earlier, this python was discovered nearby with a swollen belly what turned out to be a 15-pound pet cat named Francis. These incidents are becoming so common that Miami-Dade County now has an emergency unit to respond to such calls. It's called the Anti-Venom Unit. This is a big problem here in South Florida. And these are big snakes that can hurt a young child as well as a teenage boy or even a full-grown adult. Handling these snakes is dangerous even for professionals. How did pythons native to Southeast Asia end up in these Miami neighborhoods? For many years now, these snakes have been very popular pets. Ron McGill of the Miami Metro Zoo has been studying Florida wildlife for nearly 30 years. The unfortunate thing is they purchase these animals when they're hatchlings or newborns in pet shops and they look very manageable. But when pythons get too big for their cages, owners release them into the Everglades. And in 1992, when Hurricane Andrew hit here, destroying homes and pet stores, hundreds of young pythons escaped into the wild. 
nobody could have predicted what happened next. Because of our climate, it's so conducive to these animals when they are released or they escape that they thrive. Not only do they thrive, they reproduce. Just how many pythons are now living in the Everglades is unknown. But there's no question the number is growing. A large constrictor can have 50 to 60 live babies that are on their own. So really, I don't see a way short of a long, deep freeze in South Florida where these animals are going to be eradicated. McGill has evidence that this new population of snakes are about to become giants. This is a 20-foot skin of a reticulated python that washed up on a beach in Miami. An animal that started out as a pet, but now is indicative of a problem that we're experiencing here in South Florida. And the South Florida environment is extremely conducive to the growth of these snakes. It's a warm, human environment, has an incredible prey base, whether it be raccoons, possums, waterfowl, uh, and are quite supportive for snakes reaching maximum size. The implications to people here in Florida could be lethal. A snake this size in a residential area can pretty much prey on anything he wants. This snake could kill me that fast if it wanted to. Wildlife biologist Joe Wazalewski is no stranger to giant snakes. In 1989, he helped capture this 22-foot python, the biggest snake ever found in the United States. Now he's going to lead a hunt here in Florida to find a giant even bigger than that. Wazalewski believes that giant snakes are thriving in the Everglades and may start crossing into residential areas. Now he's looking for evidence. But snakes, even giant ones, are elusive. First, he will set up motion sensing cameras. You know, this is actually perfect. If I were to be a python in this neighborhood, this is where I'd want to be. Nice shaded, houses all over, Everglades right there. This could be the spot. The place he's chosen is the border between the Everglades National Park and the densely populated suburbs south of Miami. They'll be going from point A to point B. And if there's any movement in front of this camera, it will catch it. Now he'll drive along this boundary in search of evidence that full-grown pythons, upwards of 20 feet, are in fact leaving the Everglades and invading these neighborhoods. If the pythons are in the Everglades, it's just a matter of crossing a road to get into these urban areas. Will Wazalewski find the giant snake he's looking for? Yeah, wait, hold on, there's one. In South Florida, there are signs that dozens of neighborhoods around Miami could be under attack from giant killer snakes. Experts point to these photos as evidence. They were taken by a wildlife researcher in the Everglades in 2005. They show a 13-foot Burmese python, which appears to have burst open after swallowing a six-foot alligator whole. Snakes' digestive systems are incredible. They can digest almost anything. People are speculating, well, that the python just exploded because the alligator was too big. That's really not the case at all. What most likely happened is that this alligator was swallowed. Either a claw or a tooth or something caused some type of perforation in the python's gut, caused an infection, which led to the death of the snake. If pythons are growing large enough to swallow alligators whole, then they could be a threat to people living nearby. A python that gets to any of significant size in a place like the Everglades will feed on any warm-blooded mammal of any size that it can kill and swallow. They can adapt, they can branch out, they can be found in suburban areas. A 2007 U.S. Geological Survey reports that as the Earth continues to warm, the to California. Joe Wazalewski thinks that's happening already. We really could be on the verge of a real epidemic with these pythons. Just because you don't see them does not necessarily mean they're not here. What it does mean is they're hiding pretty good on us. It's been dry for the last few months. Up until a couple nights ago, we got some really good rains. And with the rains coming in, it sort of wakes all the wildlife up right now is the perfect time to look for pythons. A thousand miles away in Venezuela, anaconda expert Jesus Rivas is about to begin his search for a giant snake. This region of South America is a hotbed for giant snake sightings. From neighboring Brazil came one of history's most widely sighted encounters. It came from this man, Colonel Percy Fawcett. 
On January 